Welcome folks to this prerequisite tutorial for the introduction to control engineering course. We assume the students have taken signals and system course and the discussion in this tutorial is the foundation for the introduction to control engineering course. So let us start with the concept of a linear and time invariant system and if the system is represented as a block as shown here this system will have an input and the system will process this input to generate an output for example if the system is a vehicle or a car then the input of the system might be the displacement in the gas barrel. So when you push the gas barrel, you have a displacement in the gas barrel. Then the output of the system will be the speed of the car. So this is an example of mechanical system. The system can be an amplifier, for example. And this amplifier will have an input that is current received by the antenna of a cell phone and this cell phone as a system will process this input and will generate an output that is the audio signal that's going to the speaker of this cell phone. So the input can be mathematically expressed as a signal we're gonna call it here x of t and the output is also expressed as a signal we're going to call it y of t. So a system will have input signal x of t and, and an output signal y of t. If the system is linear and time invariant, then the system itself doesn't change with time. What changes is the input signal and the output signal, but the system itself is constant. For example, if the system is electric circuit, then the values of the components in the circuit are constant. They do not change with time. Basically, it means that the values for the resistors, the capacitors, inductors are constant. They do not change with time. On the other hand, if the system is a space shuttle, while it is being launched, the system is time varying system. Why? Because as the space shuttle is moving upward, the mass is decreasing as it is consumed by the fuel. So the reduction in the mass makes the system to be time variant system. If the system is linear and time invariant, then the relationship between the output and the input is described by differential equation with constant coefficients very very important remark you have to keep that in mind linear and time invariant system means that the relationship between the output and the input is a differential equation with constant coefficients for example we can describe a system as the third derivative of the output y plus three times plus three times the second derivative of the output plus two times the derivative of the output plus five times the output that will equal to three times the derivative of the input plus seven times the input itself. Now keep in mind that those coefficients within this differential equation represent the values of R's, L's and C's in electric circuits or it can be the spring constant, the mass and the friction in mechanical systems. This differential equation is organized such that the derivative terms of the output are placed on the left hand side of the equation and the derivative terms of the input are placed on the right hand side of the equation. So we organized the terms of the, this differential equation. Also the coefficient of the highest derivative of the output is set to be 1. 
the general form of the differential equations can be expressed as follows. Over here we have n terms of the output derivatives and m terms of the input derivatives. So this general form that describes the system can be of n order of the outputs and any m order of the input. So basically, if the system is linear in time invariant system, we have a differential equation that describes the output to the input. And if I want to solve for the output for a given input, I have to solve for this differential equation. However, solving differential equations is tedious. So there are other two methods that are commonly used in control engineering. Those two methods are the convolution of the impulse response and the second method, which is the most commonly used method, is to use the transfer function in the Laplace domain. Let's define the impulse response of a system H of T. The impulse response H of T is basically the response or the output of the system when the input is the impulse signal delta t. So if we have the system as shown here and we apply the impulse signal delta t to the input, then the output of the system is called the impulse response h of t. It is the response to the impulse signal. It is the output to the input signal. So the word response means output. Note that the impulse response h of t is a signal. It is an output to the impulse. Now we are interested in applying an input signal x of t instead of the impulse signal delta t and we want to know the output y of t. But instead of using the differential equation we will assume that we know the impulse response of the signal h of t. Basically what we are saying is what is the output of the system y of t for a given input x of t if we know the impulse response h of t. Now it was mathematically proven that the output of the system will equal to the impulse response h of t convolved with x of t, the input signal, where this convolution is basically the convolution integral, that is the integral from minus infinity to t of h of tau times x of t minus tau d tau. Now when we use the convolution integral here, we must assume that all initial conditions are zero. So this is a true when all initial conditions are zero. Now, at the output of the system in the block diagram, we can state that y of t is equal to h of t convolved with x of t. So we were able to get rid of the differential equation and replace it with the impulse response. And this is a very important step because instead of defining the system with a differential equation, I can define the system now with a signal h of t. And if I know what h of t is, I will be able to determine the output for any input using the convolution of the impulse response with the input. And that is a very important step in the development of the system. However, to evaluate the output using the convolution integral is tedious. So to simplify our design process, we use the transfer function of the system h of s. If we have a system as shown here with input signal x of t and output signal y of t, then we can convert the input signal into its Laplace equivalence which is x of s. So over here we have transformed the domain of the signal from the time domain to the complex frequency domain or the Laplace domain. 
also the output signal is converted into the Laplace equivalence which is y of s. As I said earlier keep in mind that x of t and x of s are the same signals but we converted the signals from the time domain to the complex frequency domain and we did the same thing for the output. The transfer function h of s is defined as the ratio of the output signal in the Laplace domain which is y of s to the input signal in the Laplace domain that is x of s. Now keep in mind that this transfer function is defined when all initial conditions are zero. From the definition of the transfer function we can define the output by using the cross multiplication so we can state that y of s is equal to h of s times x of s. Now we were able to get rid of the convolution integral but we have to convert the system from the time domain into the complex domain and that is why the transfer function is so powerful as a tool for us to use in control engineering because we were able to know what the output is basically by multiplying the transfer function times the input once the system is converted to the Laplace transform or to the Laplace domain. So control engineers are very comfortable in dealing with the Laplace domain because analyzing the system in the Laplace domain becomes very easy or easier once we converted the system to the Laplace domain. To summarize what we have said so far, the first thing we said is linear and time invariant systems are described by differential equations with constant coefficients. The output of the system may be obtained by solving the differential equations or computing the convolution of the impulse response with the input signal or by multiplying the transfer function with the input signal in the Laplace domain. Those are three very fundamental concepts for us to succeed in control engineering. So please understand those concepts and also memorize them.